In this video, I show you how to use the VHD Plus Wi-Fi extension and how to control your projects with an app. I first connect the Wi-Fi extension and connect the ESP01. Because I want to do a remote controlled robot, I also add the motor extension. I already built this wooden plate with motors and can connect my FPGA board. Now I create the FPGA code. I select the motor and Wi-Fi extension and create the project. And for the communication, I add the string library. In the created code, you can see the process where you control the motors and where you can interact with the Wi-Fi module. Because I want to record a route and let the robot drive on its own, I create a RAM to save the route and some signals. Now I can receive and decode commands from the Wi-Fi module. The message is saved in a string, the first char is saved and the remaining message is converted to a number. Depending on the first char, I start the route, let the robot drive the route backwards or do the other operations I will also add in the app. Now I add the code to control the motor. I first wait to start the route, set the direction in that the right and left motor should spin set the length and the speed. Then I start the motors and check if the motors should stop while driving. I also reset the stop request when the robot stopped. I could already drive manually with this code. But now I add some code to let the robot drive a recorded route. I first get the route to drive and then add a loop and then I go through all route steps. I set the direction, speed and length and start the motors. After the process from before finished, I go to the next route step. Finally, I add a process that tells the Wi-Fi module if the robot is driving, has an error, or what speed the motors drive with. For the speed, I take the higher value of the two for left and right. Then I use the string function to convert the number to a string and send the message to the Wi-Fi module. Now I add the signals for the speed I already used in the process. and I also make the maximum length variable. Finally, I have to change the baud rate, because I used 115,200 for the Wi-Fi module. I can now click on create and connect the pins. I first add the Wi-Fi extension, and 
then add the motor extension on top. Now I start compiling. Now I go ahead with the Wi-Fi module code. For this, I create a folder. Now I can create a new Arduino sketch in the folder. For the VHD Plus remote, I already created a library on GitHub. In the example you see how to set up the Wi-Fi connection, add inputs like the button, and set the value of elements like an LED. I download the repository and add the library to my project. You first have to define the SSID and password of your network. I add the setup where I add the functions that should be called on button press and slider change. I wait until the Wi-Fi is connected and print the IP address. Now I have to add the functions where I send the slider and button value to the FPGA. Important is to call the run function in the loop and now I can also check if the FPGA sent an update. Here I also extract the number and type. Finally I can check every 500 milliseconds if the value of speed and status changed and update the value on the app. And don't forget to create the signals. I now first program the FPGA. For the Wi-Fi module, you have to select the generic ESP8266 as microcontroller and select the part. Now press the reset and program button on the Wi-Fi extension Release the reset button and then release the boot button. After that, the module is ready to be programmed. Click on run and wait until the project is built and the module programmed. Now open the serial monitor, select the port and port rate. Click on the reset button and the Wi-Fi module starts running. The last step is to download and configure the app. Set the IP address to the IP address from the serial monitor and click on connect. Then you can add elements. You can also edit, delete or rearrange the elements. For other projects, you can add some other elements like LEDs or a console. The hooks of the button and slider are directly sent to the FPGA with the Arduino code. So I set the first char in data like in the VHDP code. For the displays, I use the hooks I used when setting the display message.
Now I can first manually drive with a joystick. To record the route, I click on the route number and drive the route manually. I can set the speed and distance with the sliders. To finish the route, I click on stop. Now I can tell the robot to drive the route backwards or drive the route again. In the video description, you can find links for the code for the FPGA, Wi-Fi module and the Arduino Studio project of our app. I hope this helps you to make your own cool IoT projects.